Many uh, doctors at the time that actually stated that in fact these illnesses were caused by the living conditions around during those days. However, it seemed to be much more prudent or a bit more palatable as far as the wealthy landowners were concerned, as far as the factory owners were concerned, as far as government was concerned, to try and find the panacea for these illnesses without having to deal with all these social conditions. That cowpox inoculation had protected James Phipps from smallpox. Within a matter of a couple of years, that observation was translated into six languages. It, his cowpox vaccination became routine by the, the sort of the, the, the mid to late 1800s and early 1900s. And by 1977, smallpox, a disease which killed 500 million people in the world's history, was eliminated. The death rate from smallpox went up markedly is the only illness that went up because of the use of the vaccine. All these vaccines were introduced at the tail end of the decline. All the declines occurred well before vaccines. It has always been about better food and better living conditions. And never has it been about medical intervention. By injecting poisons, pathogens or whatever from the vaccine into the blood, you have bypassed most of your immune system. When we bypass that natural protection, we attack the baby's cells, we attack the baby's health via the back door. The whole principle of vaccines is very naive, it's very old, and we're using it as a commercial application of an idea that's at least 150 years old. The argument that the uh, pharmaceutical companies make is very deceptive. The assumption is vaccination is a good thing. In order for it to work, we have to spread it as widely as we possibly can because otherwise the people who are not vaccinated will start a disease moving through the entire population. Therefore, we must work really, really, really hard to get these things into everybody. In the meantime, every single dose of vaccination that is sold brings them a tidy profit. I think 